Ladies and gentlemen, this is a warning. Thank you. Following breaking news tonight out of North Little Rock, one man is dead and several others injured after a string of stabbings. Good evening and thanks for joining us on Fox 16 News at 9. I'm Stephanie Sharp. Police arrested Baron Brown. They believe he went to at least four places near Woodland Drive and stabbed people. Hunter Hoagland has been following the story throughout the day. He's live tonight at North Little Rock Police Headquarters. Hunter, what can you tell us? Well, Stephanie, please tell me the suspect was taken into custody earlier this morning. They say not only did he stab several family members, but complete strangers, too. <laughs> it's a pain that hurts in more ways than one. He has never been violent towards me. I didn't think he would do this to me. Gwendolyn Brown says she woke up this morning when her nephew, Baron Brown, started banging on the door. When I backed up against the couch, that's when he stuck something in my side. She says he went back to the bedroom and stabbed another person inside. She says she then ran down Woodland Drive for help. I kept feeling the, the blood run down my leg. According to North Little Rock Police, Brown's crime spree started just before 9 a.m. He then walked to several other locations where he stabbed other victims. They were both sickly. They did not deserve this. Robert Stansill heard screams, shocked to hear they were coming from the people he calls friends. It is extraordinary in this neighborhood for something like that to happen. For Brown, she says her wound will heal, but being hurt by family is a heartache that lasts. <laughs> I hope Baron get what he deserved because he don't need to be out there on the street hurting anybody. Baron Brown would be arrested the same day for his stabbing spree on July 11, 2020. But just over a month later, someone else would follow in his footsteps. Stalking the streets of Little Rock's historic Wright Avenue neighborhood at night, an unknown male has stabbed at least three transients to death and left a woman for dead. And though he's been caught on camera at least two of the crime scenes, to date, his identity has remained a mystery. He is known as the Little Rock Slasher. Goes on in San Francisco for the man known as the Zodiac Killer. There could be a serial killer in Chicago. The Oakland County child killer. Phantom killer. Frankfurt Slasher. Four children have now been murdered. Has killed five and says going to kill again. 15 brutally murdered young women. The pattern is the same. One by one, the death count started rising. A man in a mask robbed, tied, and stabbed them. Strangled, stuck in burlap bags. It is highly unlikely that these women were murdered by separate men. Where will the killer strike next? The police can't answer who or why. That's the question that we'll never know. I don't want to live the rest of my life wondering if this person's going to be caught. I believe that there's someone out there that has knowledge. And he's probably still at large. Today, the Little Rock police issue a safety alert after multiple knife attacks in the city. Three of those attacks are homicides. Thanks for joining us at six. I'm Rolly Hoyt and I'm Arlisa Goldsmith. Police believe the attacks are all connected and are now offering a $20,000 reward for the suspect. Even in today's modern world, most people are unaware that a serial killer was in their midst until a public safety alert was broadcast at which time the slasher had already claimed at least three victims. Just west of downtown, the historic district of Wright Avenue was largely undeveloped until the 1890s. Bisected by the commercial Wright Avenue, the residential area on both sides gives off an appearance of a nice neighborhood. But come evening time, things are different. Wright Avenue is a frequent hotspot of crime. But again, that's usually just the commercial section. It was August 24, 2020 when 64-year-old Larry McChristian was walking south along Gaines Street towards the busier Roosevelt Road when he crossed paths with someone else walking north in the early hours of the morning. It was not long after that someone would spot his body lying on the grass here. Well, neighbors I talked to tonight say they're terrified after hearing news of a possible serial killer on the loose here in the area. This here is the yard where one of the victims, Larry McChristian, was found stabbed to death back in August. I talked to neighbors tonight who say they won't be going anywhere alone until his killer is caught. Like all three of the victims, shockingly little is known about Larry, who was known to be homeless. 
Two days prior to his death, he was reported missing from his current town of Yellville, about two and a half hours from Little Rock. As police spoke with surrounding neighbors, they discovered that the house across the street had security cameras that captured footage of the killer. You can see that he stops and calmly heads back south on Gaines Street to where Larry had been stabbed. A later interview with a neighbor stated he watched the man die before returning on camera and walking north across 22nd Street. Locals were shocked that this random murder could occur and a $10,000 reward was raised by them. Being stabbed is a very intimate act. You have to get really close up to a person. Rachel Miller and her husband walk near South Gaines Street most days. A street where police say one of four victims was found with multiple stab wounds dead. Now that is kind of creepy to know that somebody will just come up and randomly stab you. <laughs> It is horrifying. I know that we are a tight-knit community, so my first thought was, let me make sure that everybody is aware. Brenda Walker with the Downtown Neighborhood Association, making sure everyone who calls downtown home knows of the danger that walks the same sidewalks as they do. Because of coronavirus, we weren't running as in groups as much, and so running and walking by myself, um, I will think twice about it. These neighbors say until LRPD can catch the serial killer who investigators say is responsible for three deaths in the area, they won't be hitting the pavement alone. If you see something, report it. I think just being aware of your surroundings and um, safety numbers when, we are, when you are out, walk with somebody, like my husband. It was just over a month later on the night of September 23rd when a homeless man would come up to the porch of 4218 West 12th Street to seek shelter from a rainstorm. In the years since, the home has burned down, with just the front facade of the porch remaining. It was on this porch where the man would discover his friend slumped over, a fellow transient known to him simply as Old School. After he was found dead, the man phoned police who discovered puncture wounds on his neck, but initially did not believe it to be a homicide until an autopsy would reveal that the now identified 62-year-old Jeff Welch had been stabbed repeatedly in the neck. We begin here at 5 with breaking news. Little Rock police are on the scene of a homicide. It's at a house in the 5200 block of West 12th Street. That's just two blocks from LRPD's 12th Street substation. This is still an active scene. In fact, while our photographer was there gathering information, more shots were fired. That was about a half hour ago. We'll bring you updates as we learn more throughout the morning. Despite these being crimes committed so recently, there's already a lot of misinformation on the internet in particular surrounding this murder. Not only on Wikipedia and other sites have two of the address numbers been switched, it is also claimed that Jeff lived inside the home, which is easily disproven when looking at Street View, which shows the home being abandoned sometime between April and September 2016. Also, on the July 2019 streetcar view, someone can be seen sitting on the porch drinking what appears to be a beer. Though Jeff was noted as being Caucasian, so it is unlikely to be him. After these two attacks, it seems the killer had a cooling off period. Perhaps as the world began lifting quarantine restrictions, the more people returning out and about had him afraid. But the silence would break on April 11, 2021. It was 3.33 a.m. when police would receive a phone call about a stabbing and found 41-year-old Deborah Walker staggering along a sidewalk in front of 1906 South Pulaski. She was rushed to the nearby hospital, where she would recover from 15 non-life-threatening stab wounds and told police her story. Deborah stated she had been walking near the intersection of 19th and Marshall Streets, just two blocks west from where she had been found when a stranger in a hoodie approached her and stabbed her without any provocation. Deborah would describe her attacker as a young African American male of slender build and over six feet tall.
It was less than 27 hours later when the slasher would strike again. Little Rock police are trying to figure out what happened to a body that was found early this morning in the southern part of the city. Officers responded to Wright Avenue just after 6.30 about a potential dead person in the area. Officers arrived to find a body, but no details on the identity have been released so far. We're working to find out more details and we'll keep you updated as we learn more. It was just after 6.30 a.m. when police responded to a call of a body along the bridge over railroad tracks where Wright Avenue turns into Asher Avenue, less than a mile from where Deborah had been attacked. Lying on the sidewalk in the middle of the bridge was a homeless man. According to the police report, he too was alive when police officers arrived, but died before paramedics could get there. He would be identified as 40-year-old Marlon Franklin. The fact that both sides of the bridge overlook wooded areas that easily could have hidden the body for at least a while points that this killer has no care with concealing his crimes. While he no doubt wants to put as much distance between himself and the body as soon as possible, the fact that in both videos he is seen walking calmly after murdering indicates he isn't panicking. If he wanted to, he could easily have hid the body. It was this time that the FBI entered into the case and provided a profile of the killer. News outlets spread the information as the public safety alert was released. Let me be clear. We will do everything possible to arrest this suspect and protect our city. In a pre-recorded video given to THV 11, Little Rock Police Chief Keith Humphrey announces a safety alert after multiple knife attacks in the city. We have begun working with our community partners and we also are working to ensure that there is an awareness of this specific threat. The first stabbing happened on August 24, 2020 at South Gaines Street, where 64-year-old Larry McChristian died from his injuries. The second attack was only one month later on September 23rd at West 12th Street, taking the life of 62-year-old Jeff Welch. Police responded to the third attack on April 11th of this year at 19th and Marshall Streets. The victim, a 43-year-old woman, was stabbed over 15 times but survived those injuries. Just one day later on April 12th, police investigated a homicide on Wright Avenue where they found the body of 40-year-old Marlon Franklin. It was determined then that these incidents could possibly be connected based off the evidence in each case. Detectives realized the similarities in all of these four attacks. All attacks happened between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. Police also say the victims were at-risk population. All four of them just walking in the area when they were randomly attacked. In video provided by Little Rock Police, they say this is the man they are looking for. The only survivor describes the suspect as an adult black male over six feet tall. The police chief says they are stepping up surveillance around those streets. I have put additional uniformed and plain clothes officers in the area and increase patrols. With a $20,000 reward at stake, the police chief called on the community for help while shutting down any rumors. We have no evidence that these incidents are connected with another part of the state, despite claims on social media. The FBI is working closely with LRPD. They're helping with multimedia assistance and investigation tools. They've even called in the BAU for consultation. Roly Marlisa. Advocates for the homeless also brought awareness to the situation, citing the homeless population was at the highest risk from this killer. Morning, our team coverage continues tonight with THV 11's Jordan Howington. She spoke with people at local shelters as homeless people in the area could be the most at risk. Jordan. Hey, good evening, Marlisa. Yeah, so shelters and, and homeless advocates are saying this situation right here is why the state needs more resources for the homeless community. And those uh, advocates wasted no time today getting out and alerting the homeless uh, community of this dangerous suspect. A lot of concern. Aaron Reddit, director of the van organization, is a homeless advocate in the metro. With the stabbing suspect on the loose, he urges homeless people to get out of the 12th Street Station area. Perhaps you're, you catch the story and you're in a day center or something like that. Uh, be aware be, and, and consider going to a different part of town until this is resolved. It would be my encouragement. Little Rock Police handed out flyers to homeless shelters Thursday. The Compassion Center hung them and gave them to guests, hoping to make as many people aware of the the armed and dangerous suspect. 
and he needs to be found. Nicholas Skirvin is homeless. He's been in Little Rock for two weeks after catching a bus from Tampa. He learned about the stabbings Thursday but says it's too difficult to identify the suspect because of the low quality photo. He's hopeful the community can provide better surveillance. It's real. I mean, it's, it's very, very real and it's a sad fact of our society. Redden says Arkansas lacks options for the homeless. Right now, he says more than 550 people are unsheltered just in the metro area. If everyone out there would take any shelter bed available, there's still not enough shelter beds. He says he'll spend time in the 12th Street area where the stabbings happen to help identify vulnerable people. So we want to make sure that, that they're safe and have what they need where they are, uh, but we also want to connect them and help them get rehoused however we can. And as Mercedes mentioned earlier, police are stepping up patrols in that area. And right now they are working and hoping to collect more surveillance video from people living and working in that area. For now, live in Little Rock, Jordan Howington, THV 11 News. The internet blew up when a man named Shadow Vision stated he was out hunting the killer. Hello and welcome to an RV got a stinking treat for you today here on River Valley Now. We are here with real life superhero Shadow Vision, who's going to tell you a little bit about your about himself and just give you a little bit of information. You may be wondering what in the world are we dealing with today? Shadow Vision, what can you tell us about yourself? Well, I'm an RLSH, which is a real life superhero, and I'm out here spreading hope. But what would you consider your mission and how do you accomplish that? So if I head out and I'm not after anyone in particular, if I can at least put a smile on a child's face, then I'd consider my mission accomplished. Good. So putting a smile on a kid's face from time to time and letting yes. them know they've met a, a superhero and somebody that's trying to help spread hope. Part of a group calling themselves real life superheroes, Shadow Vision patrolled the streets of Little Rock some 60 hours a week. Though his GoFundMe stated if he had a vehicle, his patrol could increase greatly. Little Rock police make an arrest in Thursday afternoon stabbing homicide on Springer Boulevard. It was November 18th that year when police responded to another stabbing of a homeless person. It's a typical day on Springer Boulevard. But across the tracks just the day before, a man's life ended under the 440 overpass. Life on the streets, it can be dangerous. It can be very dangerous. Neighbors started calling neighbors. Little Rock police say 38-year-old Michael McSpadden was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. The call came in Thursday afternoon around 4 of a stabbing in the area known for its homeless population. They stay around during the day and there's nothing to do. They also camp under 440 in Fush Creek. People living close by, like Gloria Springer, feel compassion. And you think, maybe I saw that person who got killed just now, you know, passing back. But as my mother would say, that's somebody's child. Now, there's still no word yet on the identity of this victim. We do know it was a male. Uh, police say his body was taken to the Pulaski County Coroner for an autopsy and identification. This time, the killer was apprehended the following day. Obviously, they determined he was not the suspect in the other murders due to his skin color. And then, nothing. Did Shadow Vision bust the killer? Did he get scared off by the FBI? That is what local YouTube channel Snarky Media Group wondered and put together a video where they claimed to have tracked the killer down. We conducted an investigation and found a man who told us that the slasher threatened him with a knife when he lived in a boarding house next to him on 19th and Martin Luther King. That boarding house kicked the slasher out and he moved up the street to another boarding house closer to 19th. That man also gave us the slasher's name. Snarky Media's own Ian Lee Bordeaux lives in the area and his video surveillance system captured the Little Rock Slasher roaming the neighborhood a few nights later. We then spoke with the only surviving victim of the Little Rock Slasher, Deborah Walker. She confirmed that the man that attacked her and stabbed her was the same man that had been previously identified to us. We then posted all this information on social media as the Little Rock police did not act on the information shared with them. After that, LRPD was reported to have spoken with the Little Rock Slasher at the second boarding house. 
After that visit, the owner of the boarding house kicked the slasher out. Police have stated that they interviewed and cleared that suspect. It has now been two years since the slasher has seemingly last struck. Did he move away? Is he laying low? Until we positively know, one thing is for sure. If you're out after dark on the streets of Little Rock, you better be careful. happened over a nine-month period and police tell us it's all connected to one man. It absolutely concerns me because, you know, it just plays into the to the rest of violent crime. This sounds like a different kind of violent crime. It's terrible. I'm really concerned. Kind of make you scared to move, you know. Go out of your own house. We're 40 some odd uh, patrol officers down, uh, and we're, we're having a manhunt. It's kind of hard to get all hands on deck. Somebody knows him, uh, somebody's seen him. Uh, we just need folks to call in and talk about him.